Got another paper three question for you to try. So this one covers quite a few topics. We've got optical isomerism, intermolecular forces, esterification, there's an unfamiliar mechanism, pH of a weak acid calculation, and if that wasn't enough, a titration calculation. Hope you liked the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to give it a try first. So for part A, first thing you've got to do is identify the chiral centers in vitamin C. So it's those two there. You'll see I've written up here, number of optical isomers equals two to the power N. N is just the number of chiral centers. It's obviously, it's easy in this case, but sometimes they give you um, questions where there's a lot more uh, chiral centers. So it's worth knowing this formula. Anyway, so if N is two, the number of optical isomers is going to be four. Vitamin C is obviously very soluble because it's got these four hydroxyl groups, so it can form a lot of hydrogen bonds with water. Moving on to the next part, I thought this was a little bit tricky, so I'll try to come up with a way of explaining it um, in a fairly simple way. So vitamin C, I've just copy and pasted there. I'm representing this as HOR, so HO and then that's the R group there. We know that the molecular formula of that is C6H8O6. Um, it's been reacted uh, via an esterification reaction uh, with a carboxylic acid, which we're told represent as CXHYCOOH. And then I've just highlighted the atoms that will disappear um, to generate the ester, and there's the molecular formula for the ester. So we'll start with the carbons. So if we know the molecular formula of the ester is that, it's got 22 carbons. Six have come from the vitamin C. So there must be 16 coming from the carboxylic acid. So there's one there. So X is going to be 15. In terms of the hydrogens, so same sort of format, we know that there are 38 in the ester. We know that there, there are eight in the vitamin C, but one of them is going to disappear in the reaction, the esterification reaction as part of the H2O molecule. So we're going to take seven from the 38 and that will tell us how many must have been in the carboxylic acid. So the answer is obviously 31. So moving on to part C now, so we've got to add some curly arrows to here to show how these have been generated. So if we look at sort of what's changed, we've gone from this OH group here to this C double bond O. So what must have happened is the pair of electrons on that oxygen has grabbed that hydrogen and then the pair of electrons in the OH bond have gone to there to generate the C double bond O. So that explains um, the H3O+, because that's what you would have there. And it also explains the C double bond O. So you can see we've gone from a C, C double bond to a CC single bond there, whereas the opposite's happened here. So a pair of electrons have been sort of bounced around really. So they're gonna go there and then that is going to go there and that will generate that O minus I in there. Moving on to the calculation. So um, vitamin C is a weak monobasic acid. You can see here it's partially dissociating and it's generating one um, H plus ion in the form of an H3O plus ion because they've given they've shown the water in the equation. So it's a weak monobasic acid. So to calculate the H plus concentration of a weak monobasic acid, it's the square root of the Ka, the acid dissociation constant, multiplied by the um, concentration of the acid. So H is the sort of generic representation for that weak monobasic acid. So we know the Ka value, it was given at the top of the question. We just need to calculate the concentration of the acid. And we're going to do that by moles divided by volume. 
Just remember the volume has to be in decimeters cubed, so we're getting 0.6 moles per decimeter cubed for the concentration. So when you put the numbers into the square root of K times H equation, the H plus concentration is coming out at that. So we'll just minus log this to get the pH, and remember we've got to give it a two decimal places, which comes out at 2.16. And finally, the titration. I've got one of my trusty diagrams to help explain or visualize what's happening in the experiment. So the original orange juice is here. So it's a slightly darker orange color, 150 cm cubed. Obviously the vitamin C is in there. That goes into a volumetric flask and then filled up to the mark with water. So obviously it's gonna look um, less orange. So this is your diluted orange. And then 25 cm cubed has gone into the conical flask and it's titrated against iodine. And we've got the equation for that um, reaction there. So the first thing we can do is work out the moles of iodine concentration times volume. Remember it's got to be in decimeters cubed. So 2.16 times 10 to the minus 5. Got a nice one to one ratio in the equation for the titration. So the moles of vitamin C in that 25 cm cubed using the titration is exactly the same. So then to go from here to here, the moles in the volumetric flask, well, that's 10 times 25, so it's just 2.16 times 10 to the minus four. The moles of vitamin C in here came from the 150, so basically that 2.16 times 10 to the minus four is also the moles in here. So that means the mass of vitamin C in the 150 cm cubed moles times MR of vitamin C. So that many grams, but they want it in milligrams. So we just multiply by a thousand. So we're getting 38.016 milligrams.